Good afternoon, everybody. We are here with uh, Dr. Moafat al rubai of Iraq, former National Security Advisor of Iraq, but also a very good personal friend of mine for 10 years. Um, he has just spent an absolutely fabulous uh, six weeks with us here at the Fletcher School, interacting with our students, being part of very important conferences that we've held, and uh, above all, being part of our faculty and part of our world. So let me begin by simply saying thank you, Mo. Well, thank you very, very much indeed, uh, Dean and Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought That's the way I used to, to call know, you anyway, Admiral. I know. <laughs> well, I thought what we could do, because I know a lot of our alumni are watching and are interested in this, is, is talk very quickly, but in, in a little bit of detail, about Iraq. And can I ask you to just begin by uh, providing a sense of the context of Iraq in today's world in the Middle East? Well, uh, Iraq is a, a, in a very unique position in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way I look at it is uh, now it's in a, like a valley, ah. a depression, mm. uh, whereby it's surrounded by four if you like, active volcanoes. <laughs> That's a wonderful image of, uh, of a very the, challenging situation. Very challenging yeah. situation. But uh, on, on the east, Iran, on the west, Israel, on the north, uh, Turkey, and down south is GCC led by uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Now, we need to bring up this valley to be another mountain uh, nice in time. the region to counterbalance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if Iraq is left like this, uh, uh, this will entice people. It mm -hmm. will be a recipe for to entice others to, in, to muddle in our internal affairs. Yes, exactly. So I, I believe the way forward is to build this country economic development, mm -hmm. uh, security, yeah. uh, as well as political system. Mm -hmm. But it boils down to the grand agreement mm -hmm. between the three communities in the country. Of course. This grand agreement, we thought, between Shia, Sunni, and Kurd, we thought that we have struck that uh, grand agreement mm -hmm. in, with a social contract, if you right. like, right. Uh, in, on, uh, at the end of 2005 right. through uh, ratifying the Constitution. I remember. But that, uh, Jim, you remember, yeah. uh, has probably taken us over for five years. Sure. Now I think we need to go back mm. to that social contract, the oh. Constitution, mm. and reform it. Yeah. Because through practicing and through implementing the Constitution, we find a lot of things we need to go and reform that Constitution of and course. rewrite it. Of course. So I believe a, a new social contract has to be written and has to be uh, struck, negotiated yeah. between the three communities. Well, I think that's a powerful point. Um, it, it brings to mind immediately that to conduct a social contract, you have to underwrite it with funds, with resources, which brings us to the economy. I know oil production has now uh, come up to levels from before, uh, the, at the time of Saddam Hussein, I think, and is now actually moving past that. Um, I see businessmen flying constantly into Baghdad, um, a great deal of economic activity in the north, uh, the port of Basra very active. It looks like it's going fairly well, but can you give us a word about the economy in Iraq, Mo? Well, uh, Admiral, the, if you look at the economy, we started in 2003 with 20 billion budget. Wow. Now we have just more than 130 yeah. billion yeah. budget yeah. this it's, year. It's extraordinary. Now it's really and uh, and the 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 oil production is going this way. Of course. And we are aiming to get to four billion. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, four million yeah. uh, barrel a day yeah. by the end of this year. Wow. Yeah. And we are now the the second largest producer yeah. of oil in OPEC after Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. And we exceeded Iran. Yeah, I know. So I think we are, uh, uh, we are, we are aiming for, in 2020, yeah. to, to get 9 to 10 
million barrel a day. Yeah. So we're going wow. to be the largest oil producer in the in, literally in the world. The Inshallah. 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 Yeah. So uh, I, I honestly, that will bring with it yeah. all sorts of yeah. businessmen, yeah. oil services, con yeah. uh, and uh, um, the IOCs in the world, right. the multinationals yeah. coming uh, big time, yeah. the new brands growing. Yeah. Uh, the middle class, yeah. uh, Admiral. The yeah. middle class is yeah. growing like, yeah. like yeah. hell, really, yeah. That's really fabulous. very fast. Yeah. And uh, uh, and I think we are we are we are beginning to realize mm -hmm. uh, the some of the oil wealth we are yes. producing, in the way of increasing per capita yes. uh, income, in the way of creating some employment, exactly, uh, in the way of. Uh, uh, raising the purchasing power of the ordinary people exactly. and also distributing the wealth. Yeah, exactly. And this, of course, is the social contract. And I think you can underwrite it because you do have resources. And I am, I am very optimistic. Well, that kind of brings us to the political context. And I think you have some elections coming up in April. Can you say a word politically? Because I know that's really part of the challenge. Uh, Jim, uh, this this next election, which is the 30th of April, is a crossroad for Iran. Mm -hmm. It's either we cross the eth ethnic and religious and sectarian boundaries, yeah. or we stay entrenched in our own, if you like, dungeons yeah. of uh, yeah. of uh, uh, um, sectarian and yeah. ethnic mm. vi violence and all this. Yeah. I believe the way forward is to uh, have national uh, cross bo boundaries, cross ethnical, cross sectarian uh, political parties. Yeah. And the way forward is to have a majority, 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 sorry, uh, a majority mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. in Iraq. Yes. That majority government should not be, uh, uh, well, should not pre represent yeah. uh, all three communities. Yeah. But not patch up, yes. not quota uh, yeah, issue. This quota is 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 really probably it was good for the last ten years. Yeah, for the beginning. But now you need to move now beyond I quota. Now I think we need yeah. to put a not only political program yeah. to appease the three communities, right. but a practical yeah. economic program yeah. to foment this. Yeah. Uh, national unity together, sure. this Iraq together, these three Makes communities together. And the way I think, Jim, is this. We need to build Iraq around these two, th two rivers. Okay, sure. The rivers coming, uh, going from the north down to the south. Yes. And we need to have all the waterways, yeah. roads, yeah. railways, yeah. airways, Going through that uh, corridor, of course. Like. Yeah. I call it the vertebral spine. Oh, nice! Yeah, which bolt the the three communities from yes. the north. No, it makes great sense. To to to, to the, the south and yeah. and stop this. I'm sorry to say this nonsense of mm -hmm. this project serving the Shia, this project serving yeah. the Sunni, yeah. this this economic yeah. uh, fa this factory. We will yeah. put it in the Kurdish. We'll see where is the economically viable. Yeah. and put it around that corridor yeah. to serve the three communities. I, yeah. And this is the way I think this is the best insurance policy. I agree. Or to, to keep the country together. I agree. In other words, the question is not, is this good for Kurdistan? Is this good for Shia land? Is this good for Sunni space? But is this good for Iraq? Exactly. And, that's, exactly. I, I, and it needs statesmen like you to do that. So as you head back to Iraq after a wonderful term here at the Fletcher School, first of all, we're going to miss you. Secondly, you. we want you to come back and we're going to figure out a way to continue this and to get you back to help us continue to learn about Iraq and its role in the Middle East. And lastly, I just want to say thank you personally. After 10 great years of friendship, you and I look forward to many more here at the Fletcher School in Baghdad and points in well, between. Well, uh, Admiral, I'm, I'm, I'm the one to, to be really, really grateful. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe the Fletcher School is really uh, lucky to have uh, uh, Admiral uh, <laughs> like you <laughs> to, to, to lead this, uh, this, 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 this internationally, truly international. I've seen probably more than 50 nationalities uh, yeah. around in, these, in the classes and yep. in the symposium. Yeah. It's so refreshing. And I honestly 
I learned a lot. Oh, you're so kind. And I'll, because I'm, I'm a, a, for the last 10 years in, in national security, uh, it's a hands-on uh, practitioner I am. Yeah. So I learned it the hard way yeah. by trial and error. <laughs> now, when I came the, here yeah. and saw there are people in academia who talk about national security, yeah. about intelligence, about yeah. military, about yeah. the physician, about this. Uh, it's, it's, it's an eye-opening for me. It's Fabulous. really a duo, it's challenging for me. Oh, and I learned a lot. Thank you. And it's, 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 it's uh, probably the, the best school on earth. Oh, this. my gosh. Uh, in diplomacy, yeah. international diplomacy, as well as national security. Thank you. Well, you are so very amazing. kind, and thank you. And from one friend to thank another, you. I'll see you. Shukran. Shukran.